Hi everyone, this is Ryan. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the date picker control and go over certain functionality that's useful that is not set by default that you can set to improve your functionality in your app and also some aesthetic changes that will help uh, benefit your users as well, such as a nice backdrop, rounded corners and different look and feel. Number one, you can restrict the calendar date range by using start year and end year properties. By default, start year is 1970 and end year is 2050. So if you go to the start year property at the top here, you could, for example, use the current year by using the year today function and same thing with the end year property. So now if I go into the app and I select the year or the, the date, you will see that only 2023 is available and I can't go back beyond uh, before January 2023 or past December 2023. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this is the Canvas app uh, date picker control. If you use a custom page, it's actually different. There is a minimum and maximum date that you can specify. So it's just, it goes beyond a year and you can specify by day. But with the Canvas app default date picker, you can only do it by year at this time. Number two, you could change around the default date for your date picker. So in the default date property here, it's always uh, defaults to today, but you could change that around uh, with a simple formula change. So for example, if you want it pushed, let's say one week out, you could say today plus seven, and that'll push the date out, uh, the date out seven days. Um, there's a lot of various options available here. Um, I do have a link in this uh, below in the description of this video that goes over in depth how you can set the default dates. The other option is you can actually blank this out. So you can actually remove the default date. But one thing you will notice is there's actually a text uh, input um, that's still there. So if you go to the advanced properties of your uh, date, you'll see the input text placeholder you can actually take that and remove it so that it appears blank to the user. Number three, when you add the date picker to your screen, you will notice that when you click on it, the date selection screen pops up. Now what you can do is you could change around a property called is editable and currently is set to false. If you set it to true, this will allow the user to go in and actually enter in a date manually. So that eliminates the need for the user to go in and use the selector. Now, the benefits of this is entering in dates that are far out, um, you know, or, or way before, let's, such, let's say like a birth date or something like that, it's easy to enter it in as opposed to selecting the year, month, and day. Number four, when a user changes the date, you can actually restrict what dates are selected uh, by using the on change event. So if you see here on the on change event property on the top left, I've entered in a rule here that says, if this date happens to fall on the weekend, we're going to show an error, display for five seconds, and then reset the date to its original value. So if I go in here and let's say I select the 18th and I click OK, you will see that it reset it to blank. So reset it to a blank value and it says cannot select weekend. So this is a, you know, a little clever way to not allow users to, for example, set a value that's on a weekend or perhaps before today, you can add those rules to your on change event and simply reset the field. Number five, uh, one thing that I've noticed using date controls is that by default, you select the date time zone, which is usually local, and the format is usually formatted as the short date. Now, one thing that Microsoft does when you add the date control is language is blank. So language could actually be used to specify a specific format. And one thing I've noticed, if it, this is left blank, what you perceive as being um, you know, available to you on, let's say the web, like through your browser, um, could the date could look different on your phone. And I've had that happen before. However, if you put in the language, you can actually force the date format to always be the same. So if you use Microsoft.addressInput.language, this is where you can have access to all the different address formats across the world. And for example, you'll see the US version here, month, day, year. And if we go to, for example, let's say, um, we'll choose Great Britain here, and you'll see how it goes, day, month, year, two digits for month and day. 
So this is a great way to enforce the format that you want by setting the language to your date picker. Number six, always be careful of the width of your date picker. So for example, I use March 1st, 2023. Now, if I happen to go in and change the date around to let's say uh, December, let's say 28th, you will notice how my date gets cut off. So one thing to keep in mind is whenever you set the width of your date, try to use one that's, you know, that you know that'll be longer, such as December and digits like a two and an eight where they're wider than, you know, ones. So what you could do here is use that date range and then, you know, adjust your date around and then you know what the, the date will always be seen by your users. Number seven. So the text input control, you're allowed to have rounded corners. So you can see what that looks like here. And that's because it has some properties that are called radius top left, radius bottom left, and so on. These properties do not exist on the date control. So you will have a mismatch of aesthetics if you used rounded um, you know, text box inputs uh, versus your date controls. However, if you do add a button to your app and have it in display mode of disabled and you make the aesthetics look like the text box, that can be your backdrop for your date input. So you'll see here how I have a button just before this date control here. And what I've done is I've included the border color to be the same as the border color here. And I've also changed around the thickness to be the same. And the other option is the, um, the, the corners of the button are changed around to be the same radius as the text input. And then what I did was for the date picker, I made it slightly smaller than the uh, button backdrop. And what I did is remove the border and change around the aesthetics a bit so it fits nicely in. So that way you have a nice aesthetics. Um, it looks you know, similar across all the controls here. So it's very consistent to your end users. Tip eight, you can actually change around the aesthetics of your uh, date picker. So if you go to the list here, so you'll see icon background, you can specify the color there and also the icon fill. You can see that here. So you could change around those aesthetics to what you want it to look like. And the other options that you have are also the border thickness, border color, and of course the fill as well. So you have a lot of options to change around the aesthetics for your date control to match the rest of your uh, screen. Number nine is the tab index. So tabbing on the screen is usually left to the last moment um, when you're building your app. But what you can do is if you go to your properties window, of your control, you'll see tab index at the bottom. By default, it's zero, so it'll simply tab over from uh, a Z pattern it will do. So it'll go from one field to the next, and then it'll go down below if needed. Now, what you can do is you can specify the tab index by entering a numeric value, so lower to higher, or you can remove the tab index or remove the control from a tab index by entering it a negative one and that will not allow it to be tabbed anymore. Number 10, to identify what the user selected in the date control, you would use the, uh, the component name with dot selected date. And if you put your mouse over it, you will see what's selected from the date picker. So if you're passing the date along to, let's say, a param uh, to an API, or let's say you're you know, creating a record in a database, you would always use selected date to pass along that date. So that's all the tips I have for the date picker. Hopefully you learned something new from this video and uh, you can put it to use in your apps.